So this video is about the RCA Studio 2 Home TV Programmer. A um, couple of things I'm doing here. I am going to be selling this on eBay. So part of it is to demonstrate that this does in fact work, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you look in the comments below, I'm going to show you, um, you know, if you want to skip to things. So I'm going to show you first that it works. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set it up. The third thing I want to do is uh, show that the RCA Studio 2, it, it doesn't stink. Um, it gets some really bad reviews. Uh, you see video, YouTube videos, you see things online that's like one of the worst consoles of all time. And I'm going to argue with you that, in fact, that's not the case. So I have the Studio 2. It's pretty clean. You know, it definitely has wear. I, I, I think it's probably discolored. I don't know what the original color was. This is from a garage sale. Uh, this is the original studio box. The one thing that it, even though I have the original power supply, it doesn't work. So I am using uh, an adapter that I have uh, set at 9 volts because that's what it's supposed to be at. So that that's one thing. Uh, it comes with, you're going to see it comes with some built-in programs, which I'll demonstrate in a minute. Uh, the original owner's manual in decent shape. Tennis and squash with the game and the manual. Blackjack with the game and the manual. Baseball does not work. So blackjack and tennis squash both work. For whatever reason, baseball doesn't. It comes on, but it, it just, something's not quite right. So um, it'll be included, but uh, it doesn't work. So you, it's, it's kind of strange that uh, you got to, to turn it on, basically, you have to have a TV. This thing, you turn it to studio. You're going to hear a beep, but not much else. Once it's on, assuming you don't have a cartridge in, you have a choice of four different programs that you can play that are built in. So you can do Doodle, Patterns, Bowling, Freeway, and a, uh, the Addition Game. So let me just show you Doodle real fast. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to press uh, 1. Once you press one, you're going to get a dot in the bottom left-hand corner. And when you first move around with the keyboard, you're going to basically use the keys. Um, and you can use all the keys. So if you press this, move to the right, left, up, down. You see at the moment, and this is a diagonal, it's not leaving uh, a trace. So I'm actually going to turn the volume off because it's going to annoy the heck out of everybody here. So... Uh, there's a switch on the bottom of the console to do that. So let me do that. Turn the volume off. And what you need to do is, again, right now I'm not leaving a trace. So if I press 5, it's basically like putting the pen down. And now you can see that I can draw. And I can do, you know, the diagonal here. Oops. I'm going to probably mess this up. I don't know if I need one more to do like a 3D box. That's what I'm trying to do. So it actually shows you where you are, a slightly blinking cursor. So that's actually helpful. So I screw that up so I can uh, erase that by pressing 5. Oh, no, 0. There we go. I am showing that you can like press the button and it keeps going. If you go off the screen on one side it comes back out the other side so yeah it's pretty you know it's cool it's obviously simple but um that's that's doodle the next program is patterns so what i want to do is clear this so i'm going to press the clear button and it's kind of ready to go and i got to press number two on the a keyboard a keyboard and i'm going to pretty much draw here again and i can draw whatever I want. There are some limitations. Um, I'm just going to do whatever. Um, and when, when I've done a pattern and I can do up to 130 key entries, what I want to do is I want to press zero and I want to press it now. And you'll see it starts to do that pattern over and over. So they actually give you try these simple patterns. So we're going to try uh, 666 two two zero so six 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 two two zero and it's just gonna go make a bunch of diagonals so the zero is to make it go and it kind of a neat effect as it kind of keeps going and it surprises you that it does something a little bit different so the next built-in game is bowling 
So I'm going to, I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm going to press three on the A keyboard. And it's going to tell me it's frame one, bowler one. So I'm actually going to be over here. What happens is basically this goes up and down. That's a pretty good shot. And actually the sound on this is good. So I get my second shot here. All right, so I got a score of eight. Now it's the second bowler's turn. So I basically have three options in terms of how to throw the ball. Five, it'll go straight. Two, it'll curve down. And um, eight will curve up. So I'm gonna do a two. Oh boy, that was too late. And, and you'll get some really weird pin patterns that to make no sense in real bowling. That was another bad one, so I did another two. So you can actually get a gutter ball, which is kind of fun. Um, so now I'm in two, so you're like, I only got five there. I have gotten strikes, it's not easy. Oh, see, like that's impossible. Hopefully I can show you I can get at least a spare. Um, I did, I have broken 100. One of the funny things with the bowling is they don't actually add the spare and the strike the way you're supposed to. Basically, if you get a spare, you get 15 points. And if you get a strike, you get 20, period. So 200 is a perfect game. So you, no, no 300s here. No, that's not good. No, oh, that was bad too. Like the pin action is not, like against that last pin somehow went. That's crazy. Oh, I did a five, I did a straight one there. So let me just do a downward curve with the eight key. <laughs> I want to get a spare so you know that it's actually possible. This is challenging. Oh, that should have been a strike. So this will be a spare. I'm using a straight one for this one. See, spare 15, I told you. And I have gotten a strike. Um, so again, this is a lot more fun, as far as I'm concerned it is, than... Oh, come on. Then you might think. Because, I mean, you want to get the strike. Like, at first I thought it was impossible. And, and if you want to be um, a purist, clearly, like, some of the, the pin formations, the scoring is makes no sense. And so you could easily say this is, you know, a horrible thing, but... It is what it is. Oh, yeah. See, now I am going to say it's a horrible thing. But now, um, you can you can get spirit. So you can see that, like, you want to play this. You want to do well. Get a strike. Come on. So you can see it was a super close game, 99 to 101. Uh, I did not get a strike. But it was fun. We will play Freeway. And freeway is no um, pole position, but uh, again, to me, it, it's enjoyable. Um, there's two speeds. There's a faster speed two over here and a, a normal speed eight. Um, and then basically you're steering over on the right-hand side with the four and the six keys. Um, and to start, you're gonna do this, and I'm gonna have a hard time doing this with one hand. Um, so it's telling me I'm starting. And I'm going to press 2 to go faster here. So as far as I'm concerned, this is relatively challenging. And I'm going to crash here. So I'm going to press 2 to get going. Whoa. And so, I mean, it's, it's pretty predictable. The cars go from left to right, but there are times you got to make a quick decision about do you go to the right of the car, do you go to the left of the car? I don't, I, I'm sure there's a pattern. I haven't played it enough. But, I mean, I think this is fun. It's, fun. it's more enjoyable than Pong, right? I mean, this is crazy more advanced. Oh, I'm going to get killed here. Oh, okay. Um... Right? Pong didn't have anything close to driving, so this is great. 
and it's not as good as the 2600. No, you know, I can't argue that, but it came out a little bit before that. Oof. Um, I'm going to, oh, oh, dang it. And so again, all I can tell you is I want to play this. I want to do better. I want to get by these guys. And it's not so easy. It's not completely ridiculous. Oh, I'm going to get killed. Oh, God. Um, and it's not so simple. I mean, again, maybe if I played it more, it would get to be simple. But I've never gotten through. I've played probably... Oh, jeez. I've probably played you know, a dozen times, and I've never gotten anything close to perfect. It's going to end here in a second. I think it's 60 seconds. I forget exactly what it is. And it'll, you'll get a score. So you can, again, keep track and see if you're, you know... And I, so I should have slowed down there. Oh, I'm going to get killed again. That's not good. I'm doing decent. All right. 87. That's a higher score for me. So I was... I'm a professional racer. So, I mean, I can, I can take that and go to NASCAR, and they'll let me, they'll let me go on the track. So the next thing we're going to play is Edition, and I had to get my uh, son to uh, play this because it's much better to two players. Um, basically what it is is some numbers are going to come up on the screen on the bottom, and you have to add it. One plus three, and then you have to enter. The, so the total of one plus three plus zero is four, so you'd add four on your keypad. My son will be trying to add it before I do on his keypad, okay? So this is game number five. So be ready, Justin. And this is the score here. So I got that. Oh, I got that. Oh, I missed it. And if you get six, okay. Oh. Oh boy, college graduates getting killed. Oh, <laughs> this is this one on your res. Oh, I think I got it wrong. Uh, ooh. Oh boy. Oh, oh zero. Four. Six, three, oh no, five, oh no, four. oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so we both got that one wrong. So it's just gonna it's gonna clear in a second. Oh, sing it! Oh my God! Oh, oh. Well, okay. So if I hadn't been holding the camera, I would have won. <laughs> so thank you, Justin. How uh, is that an impressive game? It's fine. <laughs> it's fun, right? So, yeah, thanks, Justin. So, it's again, for this, it is pretty fun. And it's a good way to do something educational, especially if you're competing. So, I'm going to play one of the um, games, the cartridges that came with it. I think there's like a total of eight that came out. Uh, this is Tennis or Squash. Can I have the cartridge? So, there are the actual contacts. This is the part that goes towards you. This side towards player. So it's going to... And there's uh, these prongs. I don't know what they're called. That uh, they go down. That goes down on. And you're going to push it into place. You're going to feel it uh, seat in there. Um, and then again, I had turned it off. So I'm going to turn it on over here. So I'm going to play squash because it's a one-person game. And my son has already uh, moved on to more interesting, exciting things. Press 1 shows you in the directions that you are too going to select your racket size. So I'm going to do medium by pressing 5. And I'm now going to select the ball size, or the ball speed, and I'm going to do normal, which is 8. And then I think the, the thing will start. And I'm going to move up and down with the 2 and the 8 key. So the weird thing was, and I'm trying to do this on the Oh, geez. So I think what happens is every time I hit it back successfully, I get a point, so it's just 3-5. I'm going to let it go here. Just to show the short. Yeah, so so let me clear it and show you uh, a different level. All right, so I've already started here. This is uh, small ooh, and fast. Smallest racket size. Oh, geez. And um, fastest ball size. That's what she said. 
So I turned off the beeping. You could easily fault this. It is e harder to use than a paddle, right? Um, especially the fast. You can see I'm struggling a little bit. But, I mean, it's doable. So this is especially hard, but I mean, you'd kind of want that because I think you could probably get pretty good at the easier levels. Um, so let me show you actually the easiest one. So if I did a large racket and I did seven for slow, I'm, I think this is gonna be super, yeah, so this is gonna be real easy. So point is, it, it can challenge you. So I don't think you can say this, you know, this stinks so bad. Um, it's an enjoyable game with some nice options. So straightforward pong. So I definitely won't be able to play this, um, but this is the tennis. And what's interesting is that like, if you're playing against somebody who's not as good, you can do two different paddle sizes. So this is the small and this is the large. And again, you can select slow, normal, or whatever. Um, so I'm sh again, I got to should have done. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm trying to play both. So I'm, I'm going to be terrible. And hold the, the uh, camera at the same time. Yeah. But you get an idea that, again, it's playable. And that's, that's a nice option that you can um, have two different sizes. So if you're playing a kid and they're not so good, they get a large paddle and you get a small paddle. So the last working game I have is blackjack, again with the directions and the cartridge. Um, you can play one or two players. Um, I'm gonna do the one player game, so I'm gonna press one over here. And then it can let you cut the deck, which is funny. Uh, press zero, and so I bet. And I have $200, I can bet anything between one and $10. So I wanna bet $10, I'm gonna press the zero. So there's my bet, there's my two cards. If I want to hold, I press a zero. So I got an eight and a 10. Um, I'm going to hold, press zero. And so it was a tie. So nothing happened. So it wants me to bet again. So I'm going to do another, I'm going to do five this time. I got a two and a two. So I'm going to do press one. Get a hit. So that I got 14. I'm feeling lucky. Not so lucky. So I lost. All right, so I'm gonna uh, talk about how to set this up. There are two different ways. Um, this is the manual, kind of shows you how. I'll probably put a picture of this here so you can take a look at it in case you don't have the manual. So the first way is probably the most direct way. And so you're gonna have obviously the console itself, which has a connection here, right? This long cable, which is cool. You're gonna have this selector switch, okay? So this, this thing is built into that. We're gonna see it in a minute. And you're going to have the power supply. Again, my power supply doesn't work, but I'm just going to show you that because hopefully you have a working power supply. So if you happen to have an old, old school um, TV, and I'm sure you all do, with a um, connection like this, this is the most direct way. You can see it says UHF, VHF. You're going to loosen these screws. And then with the selector box, you see it says TV to VHF. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put this down and basically just put these into place. And it doesn't matter which goes to which. So don't like don't think you gotta get it right. So I'm just gonna kind of make sure it's loose enough. There we go. And then kind of hold it. And I don't gotta go crazy, but I just want it in there. I don't want, you know, I'm gonna tug on it lightly to make sure it's in there. I don't want the connection to be so loose that it's falling all over the place. Okay, again, tighten it up. Snug, don't go crazy, it's in there. All right, so I'm gonna kinda just turn that back around. And the other two things you need to do are plug this into console cord. So this is coming from the console, console cord. And then, it says power, and you're gonna plug your power supply in there. So that's just gonna plug in right there. And then obviously you're gonna plug it into your power supply. Again, this will not work because mine doesn't work, but that's, that's the first way to connect it. That's the easiest way to connect it. <clears throat> Remember, there's no on off, there's no power switch on this. The way you turn it on is by flicking this to studio two. 
and then turning it off that way. Clear is like a reset. So another possibility is you have one of these old TVs, um, one of the, I guess, cathode ray tubes, uh, TV, TVs. This one's obviously seen better days. So if you look at the back of this TV, this is the connection you have. So you don't, you can't screw it directly in. Um, you have the RCA cables, which aren't any good. This is what you have. An antenna hookup. And we're gonna have to use that, but we're gonna have to use a special adapter. So with a TV like that, what you need is a 75 to 300 ohm matching transformer. I have, happen to have this. So 75 to 300 transformer. Uh, in terms of the eBay thing, this will not be included. I only have one of these, so I'm not including it. You can get these relatively cheap on eBay. I'll, I'll probably provide a link in the listing where you can get one if you need it. But basically, instead of connecting this directly to the back of the TV, you have to connect it to here. So again, I just used you know, the screwdriver to put that underneath and tighten it up, and now they're snug. So we're on the back of the TV. So I'm gonna put that onto the antenna connection. And so that's just pushed in. Didn't have to be screwed in, it just was pushed in. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the cord from the console itself. Plug it in as usual to where it says console cord. And I'm using a slightly different um, power supply, but the same thing, I'm gonna put this into the power nine volt and then plug it into the wall. So now I'm gonna turn the TV on. It has to be set to channel three. Um, there is a way to change, change the console to channel two if that's the issue. Uh, and again, so for me to turn it on, I gotta, for, to turn on the console, you can see it is not powered on. I have to again change this to studio two. So I'm gonna do that and you hear the beep. And so it's ready to go. So I'll do the driving game and it's working. Pattern game. So that can work on that kind of TV pretty well. There's no, again, you have to have that thing, that converter. So the last connection I'm gonna try is this uh, more modern flat screen TV. I took the exact same thing. So I got the converter and this, this TV does have an antenna cable in. And again, just to show you what I did, cause you can see it a little bit better here. I'm just pushing it in. Just pushing again. It, it look, there's a screw on it, but this doesn't have a screw, so I'm literally just pushing it in. So it's connected to there. There's the power in. This is going here again. This is hanging right now, which is obviously clumsy. If I was really going to use it on here on a regular basis, I would fix that. That's not a great thing. So I'm going to turn on the TV, and it's connecting. It's just at HDMI, which is not what I want. So I got to do the input, and I got to switch it over. I'm assuming probably to the TV antenna. Probably say no, yeah. So now I'm gonna to turn it on with this thing. So there's the beep. So it can actually work uh, on, on a large TV if you have that type of connector. If you don't, if you only have like HDMI or RCA, I, I can't help you. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's some kind of adapter somewhere this is the full screen, because I just put in the squash. I was curious. So I kept playing, and I won. I, I guess, I think you have to get past 75. I'm actually not 100% sure. So when people say the RCA Studio 2, you know, stinks, and it's one of the worst, you know, consoles of all time, they're generally comparing it to this. Again, this is a Telegame Sears version, but it's the Atari 2600. So one of the things that people will talk about and why the 2600 is so better is because of this. All the different games right? Hundreds of games, uh, color, and much more um, sophisticated. Again, the, calling the 2600 sophisticated by today's standard is kind of laughable, but certainly compared to the, the RCA Studio 2, much more sophisticated. So I just mentioned how superior the Atari games were. So, you know, why do I still think that the Studio 2 is good? You have to have some context, I, at least I think so, in terms of when these things came out. So the Studio 2... If you look at the manual, uh, it's 1976. Here's what's kind of contemporary to it. So this is uh, Telegames, Pinball Breakaway from Sears, 1977. And, and these games, they are color, but they're, 
I, I, like there's there's no driving game. There's a pinball, which is kind of lame. Um, basketball, which is a little bit fun. Breakaway and breakout are kind of typical. So, right, that's that's kind of on par with Studio Two. Here's a Super Pong Four, and you'll see that this is also from. 1977, Atari. So that's what Atari was putting out in 1977. Again, because Sears was just slapping their names on this. Um, this is actually probably more primitive in some ways than I would say the Studio 2 or Pinball. Because they got Super Pong and Pong. And those are fun. Catch is kind of just a version of Pong, except you got to catch it on the paddle, essentially. Basketball I always liked. Handball is basically Pong against a wall. So that's what Atari was putting out right about that time. But then, of course, in 1977, they, they did put out the uh, 2600, the V8, VCS. So to just you know, say how terrible it is, I don't think so. It had cartridges, right? This didn't have cartridges. This didn't have cartridges. Um, so it pales in comparison to the 2600. But I do, I still think it's it's fun. Again, I enjoy playing those games. I'm not saying that because I want to sell it. Somebody will buy this whether they think it stinks or not just because of its rarity. But uh, I think, yeah, we should give some credit to RCA. Um, and uh, the studio too.